Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And as promised, I'm here for an update on the Dr. Jacobs Castile Soap. Now this is an all natural soap that I thought I'd give a try. So not only do I make my own bar soap, I then take a lot of the bar soaps and use them for other things. So with my basic lard soap, I might cut that up and turn it into a hand soap or a laundry detergent. And then my soaps I make out of flax seed or hemp seed oil, I like to take those and turn them into an all natural shampoo. Now I do understand not everybody is really wanting to get into soap making because they're either afraid of it or they just don't want to bother with it or maybe they already do it but still would like to have some backup soaps on hand that have multi-purpose that are also natural. I'll go ahead and link down below my playlist to soap making as well as my most recent shampoo video and any other video I think that might be helpful for those who want to make their own. Now let's talk first about the shampoo just because in those videos I did make my, I have a couple of different shampoo videos. I have an old one and then I have the newer one and in those I was using the bar soap. However, you can replace the bar soap with a Castile soap and it's actually a little bit easier because it's already in liquid form. But it's very concentrated just like the Dr. Bronner's so you don't need to add a whole lot to it. So basically you're just going to make your herbal tea blend and then add the amount of soap that you feel is right. Now I would recommend starting off for the a more concentrated shampoo doing about one part soap to three parts of your herbal tea. And then from there, you can water it down when you go to use it. So what I do in the shower is I'll take my homemade shampoo and then I, or now that I'm trying out this, I just squirt a little bit of it into an eight ounce bottle, top it off with water, and then I just squirt that over my hair. And I also use that to wash the rest of me as well. And it's a lot easier to work through your hair that way, but you'll still need, especially when you're using this, you still need to dilute it down. If, if you're doing three or four parts water to one part soap, then you're still going to need to dilute it down more. I started with, I don't remember, I think I might've started with about a uh, half an ounce of the soap and then topped it off the rest of the way to the eight ounces of water and it was still too it was too much soap and so now I just put a little squirt in there when I'm using that so that applies both whether the it be the one I make from my own bar soap or the Dr. Jacobs Castile soap so you really don't need that much and that's what's great about soaps like this is they're very in a very concentrated form and in most cases you're going to want to dilute them down quite a bit no matter what you're using it on the amount you dilute it is going to depend on two different factors how you're using it and what's preferable to you so start I always say start with the more concentrated version work with that because it can be easier to water it down than it can be to thicken it back up. So make sure, just like in the case of this that I made here out of the Dr. Jacobs soaps, I, I did not try to make a full 16 ounces, that's the size of this. I just wanted to do a little bit at a time so I could add more soap or more water as is needed to get the right balance that I wanted in order to use it as a surface cleaner for any surface. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. I currently have six different varieties of the Dr. Jacobs soaps. Now I started off buying the three pack from Costco. That was where I first discovered it. I was on Costco online and looking around at different things and that happened to pop up somehow in my feed as I was searching. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And I read a little bit about, about it and thought I should give this a try because I know there's always people out there that are looking for a, a good alternative to Dr. Bronner's because they know Dr. Bronner's is a good all natural US made soap. And I do recommend it. But for those people who are trying to get away from certain things, and I, I do understand why, but again, I'm gonna state this again. Buying a product from a company that does not support your religious beliefs does not then make you a heretic. If it's a good product made in your own country, then you should get it. But you've gotta follow your conscience. If it bothers you to buy Dr. Brunner's soap, then here's one of the options, which is why I started looking into this. Now, personally, we've used Dr. Brunner's soap for years. I've always had it as a, 
back up soap mostly it only gets used uh patrick uses it as a shampoo i just mix it and water it down whether rather than using mine i don't know why it's just what he's used to he's never tried the shampoo i make for myself but he doesn't it's not as big of a deal for him he just wants something simple and so i've always just used the peppermint well once we finally run out of that i'm going to be switching him over to one of these and uh, i know which one it's going to be i've already picked it out because i love the smell and that's going to be the sandalwood i had to buy directly from the company because it's not available on costco and i love it i the the scent is wonderful and i love how my hair turned out today when i use the i've been using the honey almond on my hair and though i really like it um for some reason even following up with the vinegar rinse it just made my hair too fly away and I was having an even more difficult time controlling it but today I used the sandalwood and it really calmed it down a lot more so if you have very very curly dry hair you might want to consider trying the sandalwood it's one of those great scents that it can be a very good choice for men to use whether it be as a body wash or a shampoo for their hair so I, I love this one I really recommend it and I think this would also be a good one to use for Cody when I'm giving him a bath. So this citrus ginger is one of the other newer ones I'm trying and really in, like this one. The smell is very light, but very pleasant. And so I gave Cody a, his recent bath using this one and I loved how it made his coat very soft and it smelled nice. Now the first time I bathed him with the Dr. Jacobs, I did use the lavender. Lavender is another good one to help keep fleas away. And uh, though I didn't I didn't like the uh, resulting scent it left on him as much as the citrus. So I'll be using the citrus on him more. And before I continue, my personal favorites out of the ones I have are the, I, I really love the almond honey, which kind of surprised me. I love the smell of this. And this one, the shea butter, which was the other newer one, I was, which was the third newer one. I just, on a whim, I wanted to get three and I knew I wanted the citrus and the sandalwood and so I was trying to decide and I thought oh, I'm gonna go ahead and try that shea butter I was afraid it wouldn't like the smell but actually this is one of my favorite ones I like this way better than the lavender so just a wonderful smell so I've been trying this one on my face now yes I usually use my own hemp seed or flaxseed oil soap to wash my face with but because I'm trying these out and want to share them with you, I've been uh, using the shea butter soap on my face and very happy with it. And just all you need though, when you go to, if you're just washing your face, just a little drop in your hand is really all you need and a little enough water to make a little bit of a lather and then wash your face with it. Or if you use that soap as your hand soap anyway, just you can just squirt it out of your foaming dispenser. Out of these four, I can't say which one I like absolute best because I really like all these these four. The coconut is nice, but I wouldn't. It's it's just very very lightly scented. And when it comes to lavender, I'm it's not always my very favorite scent. I like it. It's just usually not my very favorite. But that was part of the three pack set that I got from Costco. These are just six of the many scents that they have up there. They also have a tea tree, the unscented, a charcoal one, which I guess actually does kind of smell like charcoal, but it's a black soap and people buy it for the sake of using, if, especially if they have acne, they'll use that one on their skin. And I was reading reviews on that and they said it was very, very helpful. And I know I'm forgetting at least one more. There's quite a few, but hopefully I'll be putting pictures of some of the different ones there so you can see that I had gathered last time I talked about this and this and that video. So let me go ahead and talk a bit more about many about the uses for the Castile soap. And that again, that's what makes a soap like this so great. And I've tried it for many things. I've been using it in laundry. So far, the citrus again is my favorite to use in the laundry, though I haven't tried them all in the laundry. I'm really liking the citrus. I've used the lavender in there. So I think when it comes to cleaning in general, uh, whether it be a surface cleaning, laundry, doing dishes, the, the lavender and the citrus are probably the two I'm going to stick with. Now you can just select one soap and use that for all things, but I see each thing as kind of having its own little unique properties that are going to be better for various different things. So anyway, those are the ones I like to use for cleaning in general. So my surface cleaner, like I have here in this bottle. As I said, I started off with, I, I think maybe about a half an ounce of the soap and then 
added the water about halfway up and then tried it. Too soapy. Add a little bit more water. Tried it out. Too soapy. And I kept doing that until I ended up filling the whole thing up with water to get the right consistency for using as a spray surface cleaner. So that's, you know, it's cleaning floors, counters, uh, your stove tops. I, I've even tried cleaning glass with it, which of course you have to go back and rinse it with a wet cloth and then dry it or squeegee it off. But uh, it's, I'm really happy with it. It's working really good for me on any surface. I've tried it so far. I would say start off with about maybe one part soap to eight parts water and see how that works for you when you're making the spray spray cleaner. You may want to water it down even more than that. I'm not positive what the actual ratio is of this, but I would say it's probably closer to one to 10. By the time I kept adding the water and then using a little bit and then adding the water. So again, start off with one to eight and see what you think and then making sure you leave yourself some space to add water. Now, same thing applies to the hand soap. Now with the hand soap, that's probably the one I keep at the strongest. And what I came up with is about one part soap to four parts water, and that seemed to be pretty good. When I increased it up to five parts water, it was a little too thin, but when it comes to using a foaming dispenser, that's going to be your best option. You really have to water it down. You cannot use it full strength in a foaming dispenser. In a regular dispenser, soap dispenser, yes you can, but not in a foaming dispenser because it's made to use with a diluted soap. But that's what makes it so great. So I highly recommend you get yourself some foaming dispensers. Now, you can buy just the top, the dispenser like this, in, uh, and add it to any mason jar you want. I went ahead and bought the set because I liked this particular color and at the time, I don't know if it's available now, I was having a hard time finding this the lid with the dispenser in it to go in this particular color to fit on a mason jar. So I bought the set of two. I'll go ahead and put the link down below and what I didn't realize it came with was two more of these dispensers like this. So I ended up with four of these dispensers. So that's why the lid of this is white because you don't get two more of the lid part here just two more of the dispenser so patrick had made me this uh little top to go on a little jar like this to use as a hand soap and you'll see that in my hand soap if you go back and watch my video on making hand soap from your own your own bar soap but it was just a recycled dispenser from one of those other old hand soaps i used to buy years ago he just drilled a hole in the top of this ball lid here so that I could put that dispenser in there. Well then I took, when I found I had two more of these, I took that out so I could have some more of these because I love the foaming dispenser so I could water my soap down more and make better use out of it. Then I used one of the extras they gave me in this one here. Anyway, I do go with a higher strength on that because for the hand soap I find that best. But for everything else I'm watering it down to like eight or ten parts, maybe even more, depending on how I'm using it. A shampoo, body wash, dog wash, spray cleaner. Now when I've used it in the laundry, I haven't watered it down because it's going to get watered down anyway. So I haven't measured out exactly what I'm using, but I just put a, a little squirt in the wash depending on the size of the load that I'm doing. Like what I do when I'm making skirts for people, I always wash the skirt before I ship it off. I'll put in just, I'll just a very, very tiny amount because I always like to wash the skirts by themselves. So just a little tiny squirt, more than a drop, but a little bit more. I can't tell you exactly how much, maybe about a teaspoon of the soap. I wouldn't say any more than that for a small load. And then for a bigger load, maybe a tablespoon. You really don't need much. And it does do a very good job. Now, the other day, here's something else I did in regards to laundry is I was thinking, I really want to try it as a spot cleaner. What can I use it on to see how well it works on getting out stains on fabric? Well, then I remembered the dog door curtain that I made and uh, how desperately it needed to be cleaned because the dogs go in and out. Well, it's mostly Cody and Cody gets filthy, especially because he's always going out to the property with Patrick and chasing rats and mice and chipmunks and, 
and birds and, and digging and he gets so filthy and then he goes in and out of that curtain and he it gets that curtain stained really bad. And so I needed to get it off there and clean it and in a in of course it gets, you know, the oils from his fur and then Luna too when she comes over gets on there so it does get greasy and then plus the dirt that gets ground into that grease. So what I did was I took the curtain off and I used, I think it was the citrus soap, and I actually used it full strength directly on the worst parts and then just scrubbed it together by hand and then let it sit on there for a few minutes. Then I actually took a separate bucket because I didn't want to wash that with anything else as dirty as it was and put some very hot water in there, kind of agitated it a bit and then let it soak some more. And then when I went back to check it a few minutes later, I couldn't believe how much better it looked. So I went ahead and dumped out that dirty water through the little curtain in the wash with some other things and it came out really nice so and by the way if you're interested in the dog door patrick actually built that dog door several years ago and he did do a video on it because it might be difficult to find a dog door that's made to work with a sliding glass door so he actually built this now i really feel like there's something else that i'm forgetting but it might be just because i'm using like the surface cleaner on so many different things and i'm constantly trying this out now i will keep making my own soaps and it is an excellent skill to have and i highly recommend learning how if you can get yourself over the fear i was scared of it for years too until i finally made my i finally decided i'm gonna do it i'm gonna jump in and make my first batch and i was hooked from that first batch i was hooked and all fear was gone at that point and i love making my own soap but it is nice to have some backup soap so uh again the main reason i was trying this was for the sake of, of just trying it so i can share it with other people to see what i think but I'm liking this so much, I'm probably going to stock up on some more to have it on hand. Let's just say life gets too crazy like it is right now and I, because I don't have time to make soaps for my store anymore. And I barely have time to make the soaps for us as it is. So having something to fall back on like that is nice and soap is great. You can stock up on it and not have to worry about it spoiling. Now, if you want to just try it out, you can look on Costco online. I'll put the link to that. But I also, if you'd like to try some of the other scents, I also was able to get an affiliate link set up through Dr. Jacobs. And though it's a little more expensive to buy it there, through that link, you can get 10% off your order. And that also helps us a little bit because we make just a little bit of commission off your order when you do that. And we always appreciate the ways that people like to help us out by purchasing through our links, whether it be Amazon or the Dr. Jacobs or the Mother Earth products or the Green Stock or even just buying products made directly by us through our Etsy store, which that link is always in the description box down below. If you like Dr. Bronner's soap, but maybe you're just wanting to either try something different or you're, you have your reasons why you want to just get away from a company like that, I'm very, very happy with this and highly recommend their soaps. And like I said, I like them better. They just seem like they're richer. I've used the Dr. Bronner's on my hair before, did not like what it did to my hair where this leaves my hair so much softer, especially the sandalwood one. And if you'd like some more information on hair care, I'll go ahead and put my last video I did on natural hair care. And that also, I forgot to say in that particular video, I also like to use a sandalwood comb and I'll link to the last one I bought in the description box down below as well. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, take care and God bless.